<laughs> Would you call the roll, please? Bauman. Here. Berg. Here. Bonet. Here. Serta. Here. Graf. Here. Manny. Excuse. Montemayor. Excuse. Perez. Here. Peterson. Rinflesh. Here. Sagali. Here. <clears throat> Stefan. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Wangaman. Here. Warner. Here. 14 present. Four was present. Alderman Scali, would you lead us in a pledge this evening? I, I knew that, Bob. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first thing on our agenda, we'll have a presentation by department heads. We do not have a public forum this evening, but if there are questions by any alderman for any department head, please feel free to ask uh, after Mike makes the presentation. Wait, you can't yes. Hear. Can't you hear? Mm -mm. Close the shut the air off. Uh, fans, turn the fans down. That better? Okay. There is no public forum this evening. Mike Hutz will make a presentation for department heads, but if any alderman has a question of an individual department head, please ask that department head to come up to the microphone and give you your answer. So with that, Rich first? Rich first, excuse me. Rich is going to start off and then Mike. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on August 16th, uh, Resolution 5804-05 was approved. That document requested the mayor to submit a 2005 bu budget recommendation that maintains the general fund depart departmental budgets at the same level of appropriations as the 2004 budget that is adjusted by the increase for the 2005 general fund revenue estimates. The revenues from the state and the tax levy are 85% of the general fund revenues. We know that we will not have any growth in our state revenues. The question is, what is the Council's policy on the tax levy for the 2005 budget? The Council's guidance on the tax levy increase is needed at this time in order to clarify what level of 2005 expenditure increases will be funded from revenue increases and what amount of 2005 expenditure requests need to be reduced in order to balance the budget. The document before you this evening includes a 5.5% tax levy increase. This would fund additional revenue of 251,000 for the debt service fund and 776,000 for the general fund and no increase for the library or transit funds. With a tax levy increase of 7.7%, the council could appropriate an additional 400,000 for the general fund and still remain within the expenditure restraint program. Even with this level of support, the departments will have to reduce the request for appropriations by over $3 million, which will have a major impact on services. Adding 92,000 to the transit tax levy and 238,000 to the library tax levy to maintain their current reduced level of service would require an increase in the tax levy of 9.4%. At this time, we'll review the handout that I've uh, given to the council for some background information and comparison on the tax levy decisions. Uh, please indicate to the mayor if you have any questions while I cover this material. Otherwise, I'll, I'll continue with the review. Uh, the first page is a glossary of terms. First term is assessed values, which is the value of each taxable property that is established by the city assessor. And this is the value that is used for each tax bill. 
The assessment level is the ratio of assessed value to the market value of all taxable property within a municipality or district. Equalized values is the current market value of all taxable property within a municipality or taxing district that is established by the state of Wisconsin. The equalized values are used to distribute the tax levy of larger districts, such as the county or a school district, to the municipalities, such as the cities, villages, and towns that are required to include the levies on the tax bill. The assessed tax rate is, the, is, is calculated by the tax levy of a municipality or taxing district that is divided by the total assessed valuation and expressed as dollars per thousand of assessed value. This is the tax rate that is on the tax bill. Equalized tax rate, the tax levy of a taxing district that is divided by the equalized valuation and is expressed as a rate per thousand of equalized values. The equalized tax rate has no official use and does not appear on, this, on the tax bill. Expenditure restraint program. The state program that limits the expenditures for the general fund to a percentage increase that is calculated based on the consumer price index and the amount of new construction growth in the community. The city of Sheboygan's limit was 3% for 2004 and is estimated to be 3.5% for 2005. The state appropriates a fixed amount of funding for the program that is distributed based on the number of municipalities that qualify with appropriations under the limit. The city of Sheboygan will receive $1,008,000 in 2004 from the expenditure restraint program. And in addition, this is some of the outline of terminology that is uh, for the 2005 budget process that so we'll get into in some of the later uh, spreadsheets. The base budget being defined as the 2004 budget approved on November 24th. The allocation percent, the departmental's budget's percentage of the total general fund budget. The allocation percent is to be used to distribute the additional appropriations for increases in general fund revenues and to distribute decreases in appropriations for the cost of the salary trust contingency, the unemployment compensation, and the severance pay. The adjusted base budget, the base budget that has been adjusted for the increases in general fund revenues or the decreases in appropriations for the cost of the salary trust contingency, the unemployment comp, and the severance pay that has been distributed based on the allocation percent. They'll make more, more sense when we go through the other sheets later on. Uh, after that, there, there is a graph that is titled General Fund Budget Increases Compared to State Expenditure Restraint Limit. The lower red line uh, shows what the city's general fund budget, actual budget was at the level. And the green line shows what the state would have allowed the general fund budget to be if we were to the max each year. The city on an average has stayed one and a quarter percent below the expenditure restraint limit. And uh, because of that, we, we were at 32 million in 2004. If we had stayed at the expenditure restraint limit uh, throughout the years, the 04 budget would have been at 36 and a half million. So the city has focused not only on meeting this program, which is voluntary, but we have uh, stayed below that limit. And the, the question is, I guess it's a, it's a weighing there of this as a resource. We can't go back and pick up that additional allocation. It's only towards the future. Uh, but it is a question here as we go through this of what the policy is for this year. Obviously, in, in the past, the policy was to keep it below the expenditure restraints on an average. After that, there you have a um, fold-out graph that uh, I'd like to extend my thanks to the engineering department for their assistance. And this does show, and there also is a, there's a chart on the wall that uh, repeats the same. Uh, this is the 2003 property taxes that were collected in 2004. Uh, it is a pie chart showing all the different entities that make up the tax bill for each parcel within the city. And uh, the the amounts are related to an average residential uh, value of 88000 And you can see the city of Sheboygan is about one-third of the tax bill. 
Um, and for a parcel of 88,000, uh, they would be paying $74.33 a month in taxes uh, for the city services, for all the police and fire services, the public works, and all the other departments' uh, services to the community. So in a sense, this is you know somewhat comparable to some of the utility bills that people receive for all the other services that is provided to them. Um, so I said, if you have any questions, just please indicate. The uh, next graph is on the assessed and equalized tax rate from 93 to 2004. Uh, shows there how the upper line is the assessed tax rate and there was an increase going through 93 to 99 then you see it drops and that refers to the revaluation and it comes in line again with the equalized tax rate uh, then so slowly starts uh, separating again but a lot of the um, you know we always express our tax rate in terms of the assess because as we said earlier in the terms that's what appears on the tax bill uh, a lot of the other governmental entities will express it in terms of the equalized tax rate which is really an unofficial rate um, but it does indicate here in the, the lower line that our equalized tax rate has declined or has remained um, very stable through the years that used to be above ten dollars per thousand and now it's down to, to nine dollars per thousand and did decline in this last budget year uh, so it's, I think it's good to have a focus on that when you hear about the other rates. The next sheet is um, start off there with a comparison of the old four budget to the previous five years. And I think it takes you to take a little bit of time to see some of the historical significance here and how 2004 was a pivotal year for the budget and how we're still going through some of those changes. Uh, the tax levy and the governmental revenues from the state had an average increase of 772,000 per year in the 98 to 2003 budgets. The tax levy and governmental revenues in the 2004 budget decreased 816,000. So if you take those two accounts that are normal trend is an increase of 772, but 04 we had a decrease of 816, it means it's really an impact of more than one and a half million dollars. The appropriations for expenditures had an average increase of about 750,000 per year in the 98 to 2003 budgets. The appropriations for expenditures for the 04 budget increased 173,000. The main issue in the 2005 budget centers on the revenue growth in the general fund that will not be sufficient to fund the 2005 cost increases and the 2004 concessions that will end on January 1st, 05. Since the general fund budgets are 85 to 90 percent wages and benefits, it is inevitable reductions in staffing levels will be required and that the budget will require appropriations for the cost of unemployment compensation and severance pay. We have established through the council mm -hmm. some policies already on the 2005 budget. Uh, they include the 2005 requests will be reduced to the 2004 budget level adjusted by revenue estimates. And that was under the previous resolution referred to. The general fund capital outlay appropriations will be limited to, to 300,000 for 2005. And the tax levy for library and transit will remain at the 2004 level. Now that is still a question before you on tonight's document because it does also have the library and transit levies on there so that can be addressed by tonight's council meeting also. Uh, assumptions that uh, were made and we developed the, the request to send to councils that the state revenues will remain stable. Uh, the revenue estimates include a tax levy increase of 5.5% which is related to the proposed resolution tonight. And the salary trust contingency is to be included in the budget with funding from adjustments to all departmental appropriations. Now, under the expenditure restraint program, uh, gave out this section at the last council meeting, but I know uh, it was a short time we had to review it, so I'm kind of going over it again because it's important for everyone to understand. 
The general fund is under the expenditure restraint program that limits the increases in appropriations. That limit is estimated to be 3.5% for 2005. The difference between a 2.3% budget increase and a 35 budget increase is approximately 400,000. And again, the growth in the revenues right now that we have would fund a 2.3% budget increase of the revenues that were submitted to you uh, in the earlier uh, council meeting. But the difference between that and uh, the expenditure restraint would be 400,000. If the council were to grant a tax levy increase of 7.7% instead of 5.5, that would allow funding for an additional 400,000 of general fund appropriations. The 400,000 increase in revenue would save approximately 165,000 in unemployment compensation and severance pay. This would also save approximately 11 jobs and the services that they can provide to the community. And again, I guess we'll look at it in the next page what, what the overall impact of that will be. Uh, the next page has a summary of, of the requests uh, they were about $36.6 .6 in requests for 2005, uh, compared to $32 million for 2004, so the increase is about $4.5 million. The revenue estimates were $32.7 million for 05 compared to $32 million for 2004, so that's about a 700000 increase. So the difference between the appropriation requests and the revenues is $3.8 million. Within the requests were $672,000 of general fund capital outlay. We are earmarking the cable fund contribution of $300,000 for that, and it was also one of the limits the council set in a previous resolution that the uh, capital outlay be limited to $300,000. So through our process, we will reduce those requests by $372,000. So if we adjust that $3 million by that three seven two. dollars it leaves us with 3,475,000 still to be addressed, and that's with a 5.5% tax levy increase. And again, as we said, uh, going to 7.7 .7 would allow additional funding of 400,000, and then the net appropriation requests would still be over $3 million in excess of, of the revenue estimates. Okay. The next page that you have, and this goes back to some of the other terminology that we had on the first page, uh, this is the process that we went through uh, that addressing the Resolution 58 of starting with the uh, 2004 budget for each one of the cost centers and making calculating an allocation percent on that as that portion of the total budget uh, for each one of the cost centers and departments. And then we allocated the revenue increase to each one of those cost centers based on that allocation percent and also uh, deducted uh, for the anticipated salary trust, unemployment comp, and severance pay. And then to the first, col first bullet column, you see there 2005 adjusted base budget that is the 04 budget plus the adjustment for the revenues minus the adjustment for the salary trust in unemployment comp. Uh, next to that, we have the 2005 budget requests. Uh, we remove the capital outlay because we're putting that in a separate process. And you can see the 05 budget request without capital outlay, also a bold column. We compare those two that are in bold, the 05 adjusted base budget and the 05 uh, budget request without cap outlay. That difference is what the departments would have to address uh, to reduce their, their budget requests at, at this point. And that again is with the 5.5% tax levy increase. The 7.7 .7 would take about 11% off those reductions to give you a general view of that. But as you can see, there's, there's major uh, reductions throughout all the departments and of course it's proportional even though the smaller departments have, have smaller amounts obviously uh, to them it's also a major impact so uh, a lot of departments will have one two three more uh, I know police is, is looking probably around around uh, close to 20 people and my cuts will be addressing you after 
uh, I complete my presentation on each one of those. But this, this would be uh, the reductions for the three and a half million. Uh, at this point, and as you say, see, it's a draft. After the council's uh, decision tonight, we will revise this tomorrow and give the calculations to uh, the department so what they have to submit to the mayor by Thursday as their um, reduction plan. The page after that is the, um, it says proposed 2005 tax levy increase. I guess if you, there's three pages of calculations and the final page in the handout if you turn to that. Um, it's proposed 2005 tax levy increase and it has it by first as the tax levy increase of 5.5% and it shows the increase in the debt service fund of 251,000 and the general fund increase is 776,000. Uh, to the right, uh, you can see that it has an estimated tax rate of 2.57 and estimated tax rate increase of 0.43 with the estimated tax rate percent increase of 4.2. Uh, we have estimated all these because we, we do not have our assessed values at this time. Uh, we worked with Marie and she has been very good about giving me information. I think we're very close on this. We have some information on the TIF districts. Um, but what basically what we would have here is our growth in the assessed values away from the TIF districts would take off about one and a quarter percent off the tax levy increase is a general formula. Um, on the right hand side, I also put an example of an increased tax levy for an $88,000 parcel, again our average no parcel value uh, for residential it would be about $37 per year, about $3 per month and that's at a five and a half percent. Adding an additional 400,000 to go to the 7.7% uh, in the middle section, uh, you'd be looking at a estimated tax rate of 10.78, uh, estimated tax rate increase of 64 cents and a percent increase of about 6.3%. On the average parcel, would increase about $56 per year, or about $5 per month. The lower section includes adding 92,000 for the transit tax levy and 238,000 to the library tax levy. Uh, that would put the increase up to 9.4%. Uh, estimated tax rate would be 1096. Uh, the estimated tax rate increase would be 82 cents or 8.1%. And on the sample parcel, average parcel would be $72 per year or $6 a month. Alderman Groff. <coughs> I just want to make sure that that's those are for a parcel that's worth $88,000. Correct, that's an average. Proportionally, if, if it was worth $176,000, it would be double that and so forth. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's an average residential parcel. <clears throat> Any other questions? Alderman Stephan. I have one of those questions that I'm not sure I want to hear the answer for. Um, from what I've been told, my understanding was the 7.7 .7 was as high as we could go and stay within the expenditure restraint. Otherwise, we'd start losing the money we get from the federal government. Correct, or the state. Okay, if I'm correct on that, okay, go back to your graph where you had the equalized rate. And what, I, what I'm missing, I'm sure you'll explain it to me, is there's a $4 million gap there between what's allowed, when you're not talking percentages, the general fund budget increases compared to the state expenditure limit. You know, there's a $4 million gap last year, and now we're looking for $3 million, and we can't get the whole $3 million, and I'm wondering, I don't know that we'd want to do that, but if we wanted to... You can't go back to... It's so it's by a percent every year, you're saying, kind of? Yes, yeah, so it's 1% each, each year. Okay, that's my question. Well, for okay. 2004, was, it was 3% increase was allowed. Okay. Our increase was one half of 1%. Okay, I just, but when the totals are here, I thought it was a total, but you're saying it's a total, but it's also so much every it, year. It shows what okay. it would have been if we had gone up to the limit each year. Okay, right. thank you. Okay. Any other right, questions? I that part of it, but I didn't understand why there was a small Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rich. <clears throat> Mike? Thank you. 
Thank you, Rich and Mayor. I hope I can give you a little information which we've garnered from department heads on what the effect of this will be. So I've got a couple introductory rem remarks and I'll go into individual departments. Then I'll have some concluding remarks and if you'd hold your questions till, till I'm all finished and then we can call up individual department heads if you, if you so desire. There have been many questions from aldermen and the public as to what effect our budget crisis will have on city services. The department heads have asked me to represent them to review the service reductions which still would be necessary with an appropriation increase of 3.5% which equates to a levy increase of 7.7% in the city portion of our taxes. This level was chosen because at this level we would still qualify for $1 million in state expenditure restraint payments. Initially, I must briefly, re briefly review the extent of Sheboygan's budget review process. One of my duties has been to review each request in every budget and recommend reductions wherever possible. Historical usage, trends, price increases, and anticipated usage were all considered in my reviews with department heads. I think the figures Rich presented are evidence of our success in maintaining tax increases which were far below those which were allowed under the state expenditure program. Naturally, over the years, we've had some battles over budget reductions, which many department heads can attest to, but I can assure you that departmental requests have been substantially reduced each year to stabilize the tax rate in spite of escalating costs. Last year, Sheboygan was the only community in Wisconsin where employees and department heads voluntarily returned or reduced pay increases to balance operational budgets. This action helped hold a city portion of our tax increase to one penny per thousand. City staffing levels have declined from 378 in 2002 to 361 in 2004. These staff reductions are occurring at a time when the demand for services continues to grow because of additional development, housing, added street miles, and expansion of city boundaries. Keep in mind that the demand for city services does not decrease during challenging economic times. It actually increases. Usually by this time, my budget reviews with department heads will have led to compromises and reductions which have balanced our budget. However, this year I have not reviewed individual budgets and budget lines in the general fund because all that can be cut from the departmental operating budgets to eliminate millions in city costs is the very personnel who provide the services our citizens demand. That is your decision and that is why we're coming to you tonight at this special meeting. With that thought in mind, I'd like to, to review the handout which was distributed, which I believe was delivered to your homes uh, this afternoon. Does everyone have their copy? If not, Sue has, has, ad has additional copies. Everybody have one? Everyone have one? That handout will summarize the budget cuts and decreased services which department heads foresee, even with mm -hmm. a city portion tax levy increase of 7.7%. Uh, there's, what I did is, uh, there's no magical formula to the order, I just put them in alphabetical, alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. And uh, for comparison purposes, when you see a figure, a dollar figure of a cut, you usually, we usually use a figure of around $50,000 salary and benefits equating to one position, just for your information. Um, first one is the assessor's office, which, with a 7% tax levy increase, would still have to reduce her budget by $63,000. To do so, Marie said she would have to, now I won't read these in their entirety, but I'll try and highlight the high points. Uh, Marie said she would have to reduce customer service. Service at the window right behind me uh, would be available in the morning, in the mornings, but not afternoons. They would close the, close the window. Uh, she, the uh, city is scheduled for reevaluation re to be completed in 2006. This cutback would require that reevaluation being delayed two years, at least two years, to 2008. What that has as an effect is a potential loss of, of revenue to us due to delayed field work, 
outdated property information and greater inequities lower which which cause uh, 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 problems with some people not paying their fair share in taxes on the bottom of that page you will the last paragraph you will see what would happen um, if we do wait in, two, in 2006, the city would get a letter of non-compliance from the state. In 2007, they would man mandate special training for our city staff. In 2008, they would have to attend that training. In 2009, the re revaluation must be completed. And if it's not done in 2010, the state will, com uh, will complete it and bill all costs to the city. Next department. Uh, city Attorney's Office. Steve had indicated a, even again, even with a 7.7 .7 levy increase, he would be required to reduce his budget by $34,400, which is approximately 9% of his annual budget. That would require him to take one of his clerical staff people, redu reduce her from full to part-time, and the other clerical position would be reduced from 40 to 38 hours. Of course, that'll delay information in providing legal services to all city department heads and to the council, and there would be delays in ordinance and traffic prosecution. <coughs> Third department you have is the uh, city clerk's office, where there would be uh, $22,000 in additional cuts. Uh, for those of you who were here prior to April, you may remember that the clerk's office was re reorganized earlier this year, and one position was eliminated at that time. This $22,000 cut would require, uh, we had listed here another position, but it's actually half a position. Uh, one half more position would have to be, would have to be deleted to accommodate the $22,000. That would equate over two years to a 30% reduction in staffing in that department. Uh, Sue had indicated if that were to occur, their counter downstairs and telephones would be unmanned much of the time. Council documents would be late for completion. Licenses would be delayed. And probably most important, there might be problems with, with elections. Fourth department you have is finance department, which includes uh, Rich's department purchasing and information systems. Rich would be required to reduce his departments by $103,313, which is the equivalent of a little over two positions. Rich had just indicated for now, he said, I'd uh, just be forced to close their cashiering counter, counter uh, by up to 15 hours per week. He hadn't gotten into the additional uh, reductions would be, which, would, which would be necessary. Next department is the uh, fire department, which would require six, almost $661,000 in cuts, which equates to an elimination of 11 firefighters, and that would result in the parking of one engine pumper and 100-foot rescue ladder. There would also be some changes in policy in, in the fire department. Uh, in, the case of a f in, in the case of a house fire, all stations would respond and there would be no backups available if there were additional calls. That obviously jeopardizes community safety and the safety of the individual firefighter because we wouldn't have intervention teams available in case there was a trapped firefighter. Uh, Response times will be delayed. Uh, the state has a reimbursement policy for fire inspections. Our fire department does commercial and business inspections and is reimbursed for their time. The revenue generated from that is turned over to the general fund and amounts to about $100,000 a year. That would be jeopardized. Uh, it's unknown. All of us uh, pay, have homeowners insurance. And a factor in that is an ISO rating in which they use many factors, which includes uh, firemen and, and station locations and so forth. It's not known what effect that decrease would have on those, on those ratings. The public education program, which the fire department puts on at the schools, would be 
decreased. And for those of you who might be interested down the ro road in pursuing uh, fire ambulance service, of the 11 firefighters who would be laid off, eight of them are paramedics. So that would hurt us in, uh, in that vein down the road. Uh, next department is HR, Human Resources. The cuts would come, uh, it's a five-person department, uh, two people in uh, employee safety. The, the cutbacks would come in the area of employee safety to the tune of a little over $58,000. Danger there is we're mandated, required by the Department of Commerce to have a wide variety of, of training. We have programs such as commercial driver's license, drug and alcohol testing, hearing conservation testing, bloodborne pathogen testing and vaccinations, confined space and trench rescue operations training, pulmonary function testing. All of that, we'd have no one to handle that. They cited um, a memo written to Alderman Schultz back in uh, 2001, who was chairman of risk management committee at that time. And that memo was written by me, coincidentally. Uh, at that time, Alderman Schultz wanted to know how effective our self-insured workers' compensation program has been and our safety program. He, he was questioning if we needed people in safety at that time, wanted to prove their worth. And what I found is that the, in 1987 was the last year in which we had uh, fully insured workers' compensation insurance and we paid $278,000 in premiums and had 130 workers' compensation claims. 14 years later, 2001, despite higher wages and we, as we all know, a lot higher medical costs, we had 64 claims and workers' compensation costs of only $150,000. So obviously the training and the emphasis upon safety and liability is paying off both in the workers' comp area and in our liability coverage. Next department is the mayor's office, where uh, <clears throat> even with a 7% tax levy increase, we'd have to cut an additional $22,000. Uh, since, uh, since the mayor's salary is set by council and can't be changed, and our budget is 97% salaries, that entire $22,000 reduction would have to come from either the administrative assistance position or mine. Uh, the problems, are, our worries is that would jeopardize our self-insured claim investigation pro uh, process, all court-related subrogation. Subrogation for your information is, uh, I will frequently go to court, frequently in court, attempting to recover costs uh, for city equipment that has been damaged, vandalized, or in the case of third party, for instance, a police officer makes uh, an arrest and is injured in the course of that arrest. That's covered by our workers' compensation, but I don't think it's fair for the taxpayer to be paying that when the, part, when the injury is caused by a third party. So I'll go to court and try and recover those costs uh, for those injuries. Um, it would also require the hiring of an outside consultant to handle our cable TV refranchising process, which we have just started. Our cable, our cable TV contract expires in 2006, and we have a three-year window of negotiations, which has just started. Uh, in addition to that, the mayor's office would uh, probably no longer be involved with special community events like the Summer Twilight Series the International Committee, and July 4th events. Next department is planning and development, which includes our senior center and building inspection are under Paulette's authority. Their cuts would amount to $124,000, which is about two and a half positions. Um, Paulette had indicated that uh, last year, you may recall, there was one full-time employee in building inspection and one in the plan department who, re who were reduced to half-time. And the senior center, which formerly was open 
half days on Fridays was closed uh, all day on Friday. So there were cuts already for 2004. With this level of cuts, another 124,000 in cuts, she had, she had cited uh, reduced economic development because of uh, inability to keep up with proper planning and zoning, reduced inspection and enforcement by our billing inspection department, further closures at the senior center, growing number of housing and public nuisance complaints, and it might jeopardize $2 million in federal funding, which we receive each year due to uh, uh, not enough people to handle our housing rehab uh, and lead abatement programs. Next department is the Sheboygan Police Department, where the cutbacks would amount, even with a 7.7% .7 tax <coughs> levy increase, they would be required to reduce their budget by $1,042,984. That equates to 17 positions in the police department. Of that million forty-two, the chief had indicated he could cut about $39,000 in commodities, which left a little over a million dollars to be cut in, in personnel. What he had foreseen was a, a, a reduction in abandoned vehicle processing, which would be reduced by about 50 percent, 13 police officers to be laid off, which would, which would uh, the end result of that would be a cut in the number of complaints that they could handle. Uh, they would respond only to felonies, violence, life-threatening, and higher priority cases, and they wouldn't handle non-reportable accidents, minor thefts, and vandalism, and they wouldn't get into mediating neighborhood problems. In addition to the 13 officers, uh, the community policing efforts would be either reduced or stopped because those officers would be returned to the street and a record specialist, two part-time telecommunicators, and a court services secretary would also, be, would also be cut. Of course, that would put a major dent in the front desk downstairs and their records management and the proposed municipal court. Pu <coughs> excuse me, public works. Even with a 7.7% tax levy increase, their total cuts would be $965,000. That's in addition to the $600,000 which they cut this year. If you recall, they made changes in their, in their drop-off site, substantial changes, and in their maintenance crew assignments. Of that $965,000, $396,000 would be in the Parks Division. They are considering not cleaning bathrooms on weekends, or picking up trash on weekends. The quarry and the water slide might have to be closed. Glass trim, uh, glass, <laughs> pardon me, grass crews and tree trimming would be reduced, and Wildwood Cemetery would not have any part-time people to help maintain the grounds. Streets and Sanitation Department would be cut by $457,500. Street sweeping schedules may be reduced or eliminated and the fall leaf collection may have to be eliminated with residents having to collect and deliver their leaves to the drop-off site. City buildings would be reduced by a little over $111,000 with the armory being closed and the city janitorial staff being cut. What it relates to in public works is they had projected nine part-time employees eliminate, eliminated, 20 summer seasonal employees eliminated, eliminated, and five full-time employees eliminated, which is in, in addition to the 21 positions right now which are not filled. The last two departments I have are uh, Mead Library and uh, Sheboygan Transit, both of which gave presentations last week but had asked to be included in this presentation. Uh, at Mead Library, to return the service to what it was, to return the service in 2005 to what it is right now would require $238,000 in additional funds. If you wanted to return it to the service which had existed prior to 2004, 
uh, it would require $429,582 in funds. The library working off that $238,000 figure had recommended applying all of their fund equity, which is $100,000, uh, to that amount. Uh, that leaves them with nothing in reserve. They were planning on cutting $111,000 in library service materials, which is equivalent to about one-third of the funds available for the purchase of new materials. They would also eliminate their automated equipment replacement fund, which uh, from, or I should say, eliminate it, which currently they had been funding it at $27,500 a year. That would be cut to zero. That would, uh, uh, that's how they would cover their shortfall of $238,000. Last one is Sheboygan Transit, which over the last three years, as you all know, has been cut quite, quite severely. In the last three years, 10 of 23 tripper routes have been eliminated, late night bus service has been eliminated, Sunday service eliminated, Saturday service has been cut in half, and weekday bus service was reduced. Uh, this has led to 16 positions now being vacant and one supervisory position being eliminated. If the city funding is maintained at the $545,000 figure, which was included in the, in the document Rich discussed, it would probably equate to evening bus service being eliminated and five additional positions being eliminated. And this assumes that $42,000 of our community development block grant money would again be awarded to Sheboygan, Sheboygan Transit. Uh, the Sheboygan Transit Board had recommended $92,000 more in funding to a, to a level of $637,074 to keep the level of service as it is right now. Um, now, just for a couple concluding comments before we get into questions. Even though what I've just reviewed is disturbing at the very best, it's important, it's important for each of you to realize that the financial problem we are facing is not unique to Sheboygan. At the Alliance of Cities meeting, which was held in Sheboygan last Friday, each mayor reported that they are facing deficits which amount to about 10% of their general fund, which is similar to what we face. I personally feel that regional government will help eliminate some of the problems we face, but that's the solution down the road. During your current budget deliberations to solve the crisis and prioritize services, I urge you to remember that city departments are interwoven. Each department is dependent upon the services of others to effectively discharge their duties. When one department is weakened, it will negatively affect the operation of another. Your solution to the budget dilemma is not only imperative for 2005, but will also chart a course for Sheboygan's future, since the state appears to be planning to solve its financial woes by continuing to reduce its payments to Wisconsin communities. So with that, open it up to questions of me or all the department heads here. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess my question would be, uh, Rich could probably answer this, are expenditure restraints transit and the library fund don't fall underneath those con constraints that we would have under expen expenditure restraints? Is that correct? That is correct. The expen <coughs> expenditure restraint program is just a limit on the general fund expenditures only. Okay. And there is no limit that the state has set at this time on the tax levy, so the, there's no limit on the transit or the uh, library tax levy. So we could fund those as we saw fit without... You still have injury. local control over some of those areas yet. Alderman Stephan. I'm not sure if, if you know this, I think Paulette would, but um, are we limited? We give 42, they're allocated $42,000 to the transit the last few years, are we limited? You know, could we give them, let's say they're 92,000, could we give them 136,000 if that's what it was? 
you know, knowing, I mean, I know obviously they, f they certainly qualify under, you know, it's got to be for low income and, you know, different things, but I, I don't know yeah. if there's a, you know, maybe Pete could address that too. I don't know if you would, you know. I may pass to Pete. I think he'd be okay. closer to knowing. Sure. I just think it's so important because that's one area where when we spend one dollar, the federal government gives us three, so it's a good use of our money, obviously. The transit budget comes under the uh, public service cap in block grant, which is a 15% cap. Last year, that was about $160,000. We typically get over five or $600,000 worth of requests. Right. So what you'd be talking about is reductions in Boys and Girls Club, Salvation Army, and a number of other nonprofit groups. Right. But okay, it could that be done. Your, that answers the question, okay. Yeah. Alderman Scali. Um, I'm just wondering, Mike, um, are there going to be any retirements this year? And if you are you going to be making those up, or are people going to be hiring if there are retirements? If if you're asking, are are retirees going to be replaced? I guess that's a, a departmental choice, and they'll make a request of of uh, salary and grievance. Uh, I know Rich and his figures has included uh, quite a, su a substantial amount for unemployment compensation in the anticipation of layoffs and, and the severance pay that would be necessary to pay off the people who were laid off their accrued vacation and, and so forth. But as for, as for uh, are the retirees going to be replaced, the department head would make the request and salary and grievance and you would make that decision. So. Could I ask one more question? Sure. Um, it, it would be of Chief Sire, please. Um, in your department, um, since um, you were saying that you would you would be losing um, like a, um, a truck and things like that, instead of having a 24-hour shifts, could your department go to uh, three shifts like the police department has, like, and then have um, shifts that are in between those that they would have the coverage but not the 24-hour coverage you'd have the day evenings and nights to go to a uh, the same uh, the hourly uh, schedule as a police officer we'd have to hire about one-third more firefighters presently under contracts firefighters can work 56 hours a week with no overtime included in those 56 hours to go to a eight-hour shift across the nation has been looked into, it would take one third more firefighters. So of our 70 firefighters, we'd be looking at hiring almost 23 more to cover the shifts because they're presently working 56 hours. If you compare the firefighters to the police officers, um, there are about 20 hours a week of firefighters putting in for about the same amount of pay as a police officer. Uh, and if you multiply 20 hours a week times 52 weeks, that's 1,040 hours. 1,040 hours divided by a 40 hour work schedule is about a half a year. So a firefighter right now already is giving a year and a half if you reduce the firefighters' hours and put them on an eight-hour day, you're not going to reduce those costs. Those costs are the same as in New York and Boston and everywhere else. It's not going to be reduced a cost. It's going to be the same hour, hourly rate, and you're, you're, you actually increase your cost by one-third. Okay. Well, McGraw, do you have a question or a comment? Or? Well, I was going to make a motion on the report of committee. Okay so that um, we can get that on the floor and start talking about that. Because this report of committee, um, I would move that uh, we accept and adopt and report a committee and pass the resolution. And then under discussion, okay. the, the report of committee and this uh, resolution uh, authorize the 5.5% increase. Um, so at this particular time, um, if uh, the aldermen are in support of going to 7.7, .7, I think is the maximum. Uh, a motion like that would be in order to um, to make that happen. And I would so move that we we go to the 7.7. .7. We have a motion and a second before us, under discussion. Hearing under discussion. All Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I'm a little concerned with the 7.7. 7. I, I, I will support it, but that doesn't, even at a 7.7, 7, we're still looking at a $3 million shortfall. Um, I guess I'd like to ask uh, Mike Hotz, has he had any discussions with the department heads as to what they propose to do or what they, what they recommend that we do above and beyond the 7.7? 7. 7. 
I mean, we're, we're looking at catastrophic consequences here, regardless of whether we do a 7.7, .7, which I'm in favor of doing at this point. But uh, any recommendations, Mike? Uh, we're, we're, we've got $3 million shortfall, nonetheless. We, police is gonna get hit hard. Firefighters are gonna get hit hard. Public works has already been hit too hard. They're gonna hit hard again. Where are we going? I haven't, uh, as I said, I haven't reviewed the individual line items and we always have a battle over over commodities in departments and we'll be able to reduce something there but again that amount is is very very small in proportion to to uh, the three million dollar problem which which we're going to have I think there'll be savings in in some other areas uh, I want to get into your, your garbage tipping fees tipping fees for instance uh, we are anticipating hopefully up to a half a million dollar savings in that area with a with a new contract. I think the mayor has uh, had some some ideas also which which he wanted to at some time discuss in the in the very near future. But uh, as for eliminating the entire three million dollar problem, Alderman Perez, I don't know how as of yet taking bits and pieces of of what you heard today, I guess, from, from the departments. Alderman Groff? I just wanted to say, that was why um, last week when, when Rich had given us his original memo on, on what situation we were in, I mentioned that we have to look to the future and plan and, and do some, um, some decision making. And one of those things is to possibly re-review some of the suggestions that have been made in the past on, on how we can either cons consolidate services or um, change the way we're doing things. And if it, even if it means bringing up some things that we've decided or took some action on before, we may have to reconsider them and, and look at them. And I know for myself, uh, this morning I um, received several faxes that um, were suggestions as to what we should do or what we could possibly do with um, the um, the tax exempt properties that we have, uh, I believe the mayor got that that got same email or, or whatever, and um, so I will be bringing some documents in that constituents are, are still sending to me or calling me about, and and hopefully everybody else will be bringing something in so that um, this is just the the start, and we'll give um, the department heads some idea of of what revenue they'll have to play with as far as is that. And it's up to us to work with them and closely with all of them and they with us to, um, to bring back suggestions as to what we need to do in order to survive the next five years, basically, I would guess it's going to be. Exactly. <clears throat> Alderman Rehnquist. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to make it clear to those listening at home uh, that even by a, a large tax increase of 7.7 percent, we're still facing a huge problem right now uh, this year. Uh, and it's something that you'll see your taxes go up next year and services you will notice will go down. That's something that I'm you know, uphold on. I've committed myself to bringing uh, the departments up to what I feel is the appropriate staffing level uh, over time. Uh, public works is definitely taking a hit. Police, you know, we've already talked about the community policing, which I, more comments than I get anything that I get from my, from people that, about which they see that the face of Sheboygan is, is the community policing department right now, and it would be a shame to cut that back. But that's, this year we're going to see that, and next year I think we're going to see it again. But I think it does take us to commit ourselves with the department heads uh, to get back to that staffing. And I think it does require a long-term plan that we all have to help out together. Um, I'm not in favor of taxing people overly and above, but uh, people, people understand this is not a tax increase that we're all happy about. It's one that's absolutely necessary, and even this is not enough. Well, and I also think that the state also has to work closer with us on this and show us where we're going to get shared revenue, or if we're going to have a shared revenue plan for the next five years. And that right now they are not plan. doing. <laughs> so if they're not going to give us a shared revenue equal to what we send into the state, we're going to be fighting this battle for a long time. Can I follow up on that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, that one thing I mean, not only does the city and the department heads, but uh, all the taxing uh, from the county 
that we're working with, uh, that we can do a long-range planning for what re re services can we share, what can we save down the road to the state. Exactly. You know, we can plan five years out if we know we're going to get five years out. We don't know we're going to get this year. Uh, so it does go from top down. We'll have to work together to get through this. Alderman Sigali. Um, I just, do we have to vote on this this evening? Yes. Okay, I just feel very uncomfortable since I just, we just received this information. I realized that this was coming, but to see it in black and white just kind of threw me for a loop. We can't afford to lose any more police officers in this city. We've got too many problems here. We've got gang problems. We've got drug problems. You can't take those policing things away from the people in the city. They want that. Those are their basic services. We can't take away things from public uh, works. They, they're down the way it is, and people want those services. That's what they're paying their taxes for. I, if, if need be, I will vote for the 7.7 .7 increase. I just feel that some of these services can't be downgraded any more than what they already are. Thank, Thank you. you. And the transit system. That can't be also. Okay. I shouldn't say you have to vote on it tonight. We shouldn't say you have to vote on it tonight. But if you want the budget process to move ahead, we have to keep on track. Okay. All uh, you're off. Um, if I may, I mean, we're, we're setting the revenue at this 7.7 or giving the department some. But during the next um, month, while the mayor does his review, and um, he can add and, and subtract anything he wants, but each department will be working with, or each, yeah, each department and their standing committees will be working together, hopefully coming up with some ideas and some suggestions as to how we can get by this and um, uh, possibly not lose as many people as we are losing. So we all have to work together. And, and I know there's a lot of information here, and, um, but it still would be best to, to keep everything on track and, and move ahead with at least setting this revenue number that we know we can do uh, without jeopardizing any other funding that we have. So. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I understand there's a currently there's a motion on the floor. If I'd like to make an amendment to the document concerning something else, do I have to wait until this has been taken care of? So? Well, there's yeah. an amendment on the floor. Yeah. Right, no. right, we have to vote on that first. And then, you can make an and then I can make the amendment. Okay. okay, thank you. Alderman Warner on amendment. On, amen on, on the amendment, Your Honor, yes, I will support the 7.7 the .7 increase also. Uh, I think it's necessary. We've been through a long road in the last year. We tried to do everything right last year, and I think we made the right choices. However, uh, that million dollars the state took away from us really is what fueled all of this. It fueled the, the tax revolt in the city of people who think that a city can continue to operate at the same levels of services with less and less money each year, and we have to pay more for fuel costs, more for health care, just like every business does, more for everything. You, you just can't keep doing that. We've been squeezing city department budgets uh, for paper that they buy, pencils, everything that they use. We've been squeezing people out of them, consolidating, cutting things in half. And, and this is really important. I think we have to move this forward. I do agree. It, it's not a real uh, pleasant thing to do when you have to raise taxes at a time like this, but it also is a responsible thing to do. We can't allow our city to fall apart. We can't allow the maintenance of our city and, and its emergency services and its parks and streets to fall into disrepair or we're going to pay more. We have a fire station that's needed a new roof for the five years I've been on the council and we still haven't replaced it. This year it looks like it's going to get replaced finally. Uh, we have needs for a new police station that's out in the future that is probably 40 years old. You know, if people would have made the right choices in the past, perhaps we wouldn't be at this, but Everyone on the council tries to do their best. You try to make the best choice you can. You try to keep t any tax increases to a minimum. And, uh, and I think we should all support the 7.7 .7 increase and at least give the department some direction so they can formulate their budgets, put their heads together, see where they can trim and cut, see if there's any other places we can save. And I, and I know the next month or two, we're going to be very busy looking at that from every aspect. And strategic fiscal plan will be meeting, I'm sure, on a lot of these issues and some of the ideas, as Alderman Groff mentioned, uh, are still coming forward, so. Alderman Peterson. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. I agree with all the comments made tonight, but uh, if you read these documents, even if you go to 7.7, .7, it's massive cuts in personnel and services, but we have no choice. We, we can't go above the 7.7 .7 or we jeopardize our, our state, extra state aid, so I support the, the amendment. 
Was that Sue? Would you would you call the roll? This is on the amendment, amendment. to change it from 5.5 to 7.7. Um, Berg. Aye. Bonnet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinflesh. Aye. Sedali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangerman. Aye. Werner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to make a motion um, to amend resolution number 850405 on the second last paragraph to the document, which refers to transit, um, which has limited the budget to 545000 and I'm making a motion to reconfig those numbers to the 637074 in order just to keep the service at status quo. Who seconded it? I'm sorry. We have a motion and a second before us. Under discussion, Alderman Serta? Sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I think it's important just as um, Mr. McDonald had given a presentation last week concerning tra transit and the constraints that they have been in for some time, including Mike Hutz tonight it explains that they have taken their fair share of budget cuts and constraints. And I think p the public needs to know how this constraint will be translated if we limit their service by reducing their evening service, it's only a matter of time in the near future that they will have to close their doors. And that's how it's going to be translated. We can't, and this again, I'm just asking for the status quo to move that. Thank you. Thank you. All of the stuff. Um, I guess this kind of addresses some of Alderman Sagali's issues earlier. I'll support this because I think obviously transit needs to be supported. But I want to, you know, anything we do, we can change before the budget's finalized. And I guess I would encourage us to look hard at you know taking this money and getting it from community block grant it's not a fun thing to do you're going to take it out of you know like mr fullerton said you know from nonprofits. but any more money we can get into our budget you know what's worse for nonprofits than losing police officers or losing transit that's just more problems for those non nonprofits. they see more people who don't have jobs more people who you know it, it's a rolling ball that goes downhill and never stops you know so it, it affects the community policing I think we have to look at things that maybe we didn't want to do it, but yeah, it's better to cut the nonprofits and say, look, you've got to find your own 10,000 and 15,000 for those 20 groups. If we can put 300,000 back in our budget somehow or, or 150 or whatever the case might be, you know, we've got to look at that because that's the kind of things that say, you know, what do you want to do? Not give this out or lose, you know, three police officers, a firefighter and four transit workers. I mean, that's what we've got to look at. So, in the, you know, as we look through this, I'll support this, but I would encourage us to, you know, if we can get that funding, in another spot to do that. Okay, thank you. Alderman Warner? I th thank you, Your Honor. As a member of the Transit Commission, it is true that uh, when we had our last meeting regarding the budget, it was clearly stated that if transit continues at the same level, that probably a year from now, now they're going to have to shut the doors. Because of the six In 206. Six. And, uh, we just can't, we, we cut them every year. We kept them at 545, gave them 42,000. They kept cutting, cutting, cutting. Pretty soon, you end up with uh, no riders because what ends up happening is the people find other ways or else stop using it completely. And as soon as you take away riders, you lose more federal dollars. And it just continues to, to go like that. We raised the fares, ridership dropped off because people couldn't afford to pay the extra quarter. Ridership drops off, you get less federal dollars. It's just one of those issues that um, the most needy people in our, in our society need and use this. You'll hear people say all the time that uh, I see the buses go by and they're not full. Well, there's plenty of times when they go by and they are full. We have over a half a million people a year get on our buses in the city. We're a city of 50,000. That tells me something. Maybe not every person in the city is getting on that bus, but there's enough of them out that are using it multiple times per week and it's one of the services a core service the city has to provide and I, I will support this thank you alderman sigali um, i just think that the transit system is so important there are so many people in this town that cannot afford what most of us have and that's cars that's the only way they can get around is on the bus service i can remember years ago when my buggy used to get stuck in the snow and I had my grab my little one and put it back in the apartment and go take a bus because that was the only way I could get back and forth to work or to a babysitter. And these people need it. They need it desperately. We can't take that away from them. Thank you. 
Thank you. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll on amendment? Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfesh? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Van Der Weel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Anberg? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Alderman, is there any other amendments? Alderman Bonet? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. I'd like to amend the next line item, actually the line item prior to that, to for the library fund to two million seven hundred ninety-three thousand five hundred and fifteen, which addresses the change for the two thousand five budget. Second. We have motion and second before us. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? I will. Again, any other discussion on the amendment? Alderman Grove. This is for Rich. Rich, um, if, if we do this amendment to increase the library to that funding, then we really <clears throat> exceed the, the maintenance of effort number that we normally raise them every year, which we've already, with what they have right now, they are above the maintenance of effort, correct? Correct. Okay, where does it... You had said before that this money doesn't affect um, taxes and things like that. But where does this money come from then? We are raising the, the tax levy to provide them additional funding to bring them up to their current level of service. So we're still adding that to the tax levy? Yes, that's what the motion on the floor would be. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Alderman Ray, question for Rick? Or? <clears throat> yes, I have a question as well. Um, we received some numbers with the 7.7% in increase in the city rate, uh, what that does to the average taxpayer, including uh, the transit and the new public library. Uh, can you tell me what that's going to do with the two amendments that we've just uh, put on the floor? Uh, how much more per month that would be? Um, those are not my, my are, numbers. Are but you I'm, looking at these? I can try to, yeah. Well, these and there's some others too that, we're talking, that he okay, was showing that what it, per month it's going to go to. I, I guess the, I can refer you to the last page of my handout. And the bottom section. And you can see, I guess on the right hand column, uh, my sample average parcel of $88,000, 88, uh, that would be $72 per year or $6 per month. Follow up. Uh, just to point out then for those that do not have this document in front of them, um, that what is the accurate number they can look at uh, for? Uh, We're looking at an estimated tax rate. What, yeah, what percentage increase is going to go up with these additions? About 8.1% on the rate, or Thank about you. 82 cents per thousand. Again, these are estimates. So we're not going up too much more from 77 to the 81. It's about, you know, less than 2% on the rate increase. Okay. Would you call the roll on amendment, please? <clears throat> Serta? Aye. Graf? No. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfesh? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? No. Van Der Weel? Aye. Wonkerman? Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carried. Alderman Groff. The Honor has amended. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. <coughs> Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Groff. Aye. Perez. Peterson, Aye. Rinflesh, Aye. Sagali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangeman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. We have motion and a second before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? 